right, everyone. Thank you so much for your patience and welcome to tonight's presentation on um, choosing a college. My name is Carlos Suarez and I've been a missions advisor here at Wubansi. Um, so in tonight's presentation, like I said, we're gonna be talking about choosing a college and the different factors that one should consider when uh, making those decisions. Um, you know, choosing a career path or a college path, those are very important decisions that you need to make in your life. Um, and the two are pretty much related. You know, both will make a big influence in your future and um, they would definitely influence, influence or, or have an effect in your financial stability later on in your life or your en or earning potential when you, um, when you graduate from college. And uh, these are things that you need to consider as you're making these decisions. Uh, it is not an easy decision. So uh, that's why we're considering these factors or we're gonna talk about these factors tonight. And also, you know, you do are, you are going to experience a lot of things in life, you know, cause life is, uh, is unpredictable as we know from this year and everything that's happening this year. So, uh, you know, the best, what's best for you or uh, is not always what you think is what you want. So again, these are all decisions that you can, you can make and, and kind of weigh in pros and cons. So here's a list of some of the uh, colleges that according to US News, these are the top national universities in the United States. And um, uh, you know, the list, you obviously can look through that list and see that uh, these colleges and universities, you probably have heard of them uh, throughout some time. And yes, they are very important and very prestigious universities. Uh, but again, just because they are listed by US News as, you know, the best schools doesn't necessarily mean that they're the best for you. A lot of these um, list of schools of what is the best school here and there, uh, they look at different criteria than what you might be looking at when choosing a school. Uh, for example, some of these lists, they are using uh, peer assessment as uh, uh, when they're making these lists. And what that means is that uh, top administrators are the ones who are ranking their schools. These are not schools uh, that are listed by uh, what the students are saying, but rather what the, what the administrators uh, are saying. Uh, some of these lists, they also are looking at um, uh, the um, uh, donations from the alumni. Uh, they're looking at uh, the, um, the employee rate, uh, uh, pay rates, and things like that. So again, it might be more, uh, these are best schools based on factors that might not be important to you. So obviously you wanna do your research and you wanna uh, poss possibly consider these schools, but you also want to make sure that you look at other things that are more relevant to you. So here are some of the factors, like I said, that we want to look at when you are choosing a college. You know, you want to look at programs, the size of the school, location, uh, what type of school it is, the cost, how much is it going to cost you to go to those schools, um, what kind of facilities they have. You want to use your personal judgment and see how all these things really fit into what you want from a college. You know. Um, a lot of students, they start by picking a degree, you know, what the major is, what their career is going to be, and then everything else kind of uh, become um, uh, second choice. Uh, some students, however, are undecided, so that does play into uh, the factors as well. So depending on what career you choose if you want if you're someone who already knows what career you want to pursue then there might be different uh amount of education that you need to um to obtain in order to be able to enter that workforce. So for example, if you're going in to do something more in the um, some of the trades like electrician or plumber or carpenter, you might be okay with just going to like a career school 
or perhaps even uh, some community colleges offer um, uh, courses in these fields. Uh, so, so you might only need to get like a certificate or a short uh, kind of like a two year degree, but may not need to continue on to get further education. So that um, that would def decide for you what kind of school you need. Um, you have also your two year college uh, uh, degrees, which, you know, if you want to be like a firefighter, a nurse, bookkeeper, um, you know, you might only need to go to a four year degree uh, and, and not necessarily continue. You can see in this list, though, there are a couple of degrees that have uh, a little mark next to it. And what that means is that your associate's degree is sufficient, your two-year degree is sufficient to get you into that workforce. But you will, however, if you want to get uh, promoted within the field or if you're going to get um, um, higher pay, however, in, in that field, you might need to continue your education and go for a four-year degree um, and, and and possibly even, even more than that. Um, you can also look at uh, some of the careers that require four-year college education. Um, you know, if you're going into anything in the business like accounting, uh, engineering, graphic design. Uh, so some of those, you know, I'm not going to go through the whole list, but some of those are um, careers where you might need to go, you, you will need to go and get your bachelor's. Um, Teacher, if you look at that list towards the bottom, uh, it also has a little mark. So in order to teach kind of like elementary school, middle school, you might be okay with just your bachelor's degree. But if you do want to teach higher ed, or like if you want to teach at a college, you will need to continue on and get a, um, a master's degree and perhaps even get a PhD. Um, and then you have the, the last column where it, it shows you uh, some careers where you're definitely going to need to go past your bachelor's. Um, so again, some of your career choices would also define what type of school you might need to go for. So these are the type of colleges and universities that we're going to talk about today. Um, the, you have your community college, technical colleges or technical schools, liberal art colleges, your online for-profit schools, uh, universities, and then religious colleges and universities. Um, that one itself is not really um, like a big category. It's more like, you know, you have your college and universities and some of them are uh, religiously affiliated and some of them are not. But I'll, I'll touch on that a little bit as well. So let's start with your community college. Uh, so Wabansi, for example, is a community college. We are a two-year publicly funded college. We offer associate's degrees and certificates. Uh, we also offer classes that are for personal development uh, uh, for, for people in the community. Uh, we have transfer and career programs. Uh, our transfer programs are programs that students can uh, get their associates to transfer to a four-year school later and continue with their bachelors. And then our career programs are programs intended more for students who want to enter the workforce right after they finish at Wabansi, not necessarily uh, uh, needing to transfer to get a bachelor's. Um, some of these uh, career programs can be, again, uh, associate's degrees or certificates. Um, we are also an affordable uh, option for students in the community. Um, you know, the, it, it's, uh, it's often the cost of tuition for a, for a community college is uh, a fraction of what you would pay at a university or a four-year school. Uh, it's also a local, uh, we're local, so uh, it's closer to home to some students who potentially don't want to move away from home yet. They're not ready to do that, to make that change in their life. And it also saves them money by staying close closer to home. It's also a good option for students looking for an academic boost. Uh, perhaps you've been out of school for a while or your GPA isn't uh, so great. Uh, so you would want to build your skills before you transfer to a four-year school. Uh, and it's also a good option for undecided students. Um, so students who are unsure what kind of program they want to pursue, you can actually explore different subject areas um, before committing to, uh, to a specific program 
again, without having to worry about the finances. There are different classes that you can take that will still end up transferring and you can kind of get a little taste of different uh, subjects to see which one might you be more inclined to use um, as a career. Um, all of our classes or most of our classes that are college level courses, they are transferable. Uh, there are agreements that exist with especially within the state of Illinois um, with uh, universities and colleges uh, around the state uh, to make sure again that our classes do transfer to those colleges. Um, you also want to, however, start considering what schools you want to transfer to. It definitely makes it a lot easier when you know where you want to transfer to so that we start tailoring your, um, your schedule and the classes that you're taking uh, from a community college to meet the requirements of that transfer school. It's never too early to start communicating with those schools if you have an idea where you want to go to. Uh, even if you have a couple of options, it's always good to keep that communication open with those schools um, and be in contact with them so that they can give you information as far as uh, what classes they want to see in a transcript to um, when you go and transfer there. The next school that we'll talk about, it will be our technical colleges. Usually, um, you know, this, are, this is a school where you can complete a program in two years or less. Uh, they offer um, specialized preparation for um, specific careers, uh, usually uh, in the trade or professions. It does focus uh, a lot more on the, uh, on the career, it's very hands-on, and it does not require, in, in a lot of cases, it doesn't require the general education courses that you normally would take at a college or university. Um, they do offer uh, associate's degree and certificates, not, um, not all schools, but offered an associate's degree, but they, uh, some of them would offer that associate's degree. Um, and again, like I said, they emphasize on those uh, hands-on training. Um, so, so you definitely get more of, of what you need um, on those uh, professions. And one of the things though I do want to mention, you know, some of the instructors in these fields are, uh, or in these schools are more field trained, not necessarily college trained. Uh, that, not necessarily a bad thing, you know, college, um, uh, field trained uh, staff, they have been working in that field for many, many years and they know what they're doing. They've been doing it um, uh, as a profession and now they're teaching it to their students. So again, not necessarily a bad thing for these technical schools. The next school we'll talk about, it will be liberal arts colleges. So these liberal art colleges are mostly private and not for profit. Uh, they do focus on undergraduate programs such as like your bachelor's uh, uh, degree. Classes do tend to be a little smaller uh, than your, your, let's say your university, uh, big university uh, class setting. And you can get a little bit more personalized attention from your professors when you go into uh, small classrooms. Uh, they do offer a, wide, uh, a broad base of courses in usually in the humanities, social sciences and, and the sciences. Uh, some examples, oops, sorry about that. Um, uh, some example are, uh, you know, the liber in the liberal arts degrees that you can get like languages and literature, um, some in the, you know, like a biology or, or psychology. Uh, here in Illinois, here are some of the example of uh, liberal art colleges that you'll find. Uh, most of these are kind of like in the northern Illinois uh, uh, region, uh, but this gives you an idea of what colleges in the area. And like I said, these are usually um, private schools. So later we're going to touch a little bit on pricing, but private schools usually do cost um, quite a bit more than your public schools. Uh, then we have universities. Universities are often uh, much larger than a um, like a liberal arts school. Uh, generally they do have also more, um, they offer more majors, uh, they have more research facilities for their students, they typically provide more uh, undergraduate, postgraduate education as well, so you can get your bachelor's, you can get a master's, and perhaps even get a PhD at a, at a university. Um, not all students always get like all three, and not all students get all three at the same school, but you do have, uh, they do offer it, so that's that's what, what happens with, uh, with these larger schools. Schools. There's more choices and, and more opportunities. 
uh, uh, these major research institutions, though, they do offer more, again, more opportunities to the student. They get a better um, opportunity to work side by side with the professor, especially if you are going to your to a graduate program. Uh, they do the professors do allow the students to assist in, in research and things like that. And um, in some instances, you actually get, um, if you go into school there, uh, some of the classes are taught by uh, graduate students. So there's, you know, they're teaching the students on, um, or they're giving the students the opportunity to teach the class. And then you as a student, you are um, getting an education also from, uh, from probably a fellow uh, student who is going in a higher level of classes. Um, and then again, these are just a couple of the schools in, um, in Illinois that are considered universities. Uh, Northern and University of Illinois, they're definitely much bigger schools uh, Aurora University uh, is, a, is, a, is a smaller school in comparison to those two, uh, but still offers quite a bit of different programs. Um, Aurora out of the three is the only uh, private school uh, or private university. Uh, we do we do have uh, online schools and with online schools I really don't um, you know I, I'm not going to touch on like what schools are out there are considered online schools but rather I do want to um, to give you a little bit on what to look for uh, kind of like warning signs with online schools because uh, one of the things that happen with online schools is that they often uh, often you can find scams out there where they're trying to kind of take your money and you don't really get anything in return. Um, but uh, online schools are basically schools where you can get your full uh, uh, program completed online and never really have to set foot in, in um, um, at, a, at a physical building. Um, the Again, there's many, many out there. Uh, so some of the things to look for, you know, make sure that when you're looking at these schools, anything that is promising little work required to earn a degree, that should be a red flag and, and you should look into that. Uh, any school that is packaging two degrees at a low price, um, uh, or too low of a price rather, then you should look into that as well. Uh, also look at the name of the school. If the name of the school looks too familiar or too close to like the uh, a prestigious school, something like, I don't know, like Harvard Technological University or something like that, you know, definitely do some research on that because you wanna make sure that people automatically see Harvard and think, oh, this is a great school. But again, they're just trying to um, use the Harvard name uh, to give themselves some um, some credibility. Uh, if the address is a PO box or a sweet uh, 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 has a sweet number and not uh, an actual you know campus or something like that, that's also a red flag. And um, if the prices that you are getting are prices uh, for a whole degree rather than by the credit, again, you should do some research and, 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 and see what's happening there. You should be paying per degree, uh, I'm sorry, per credit, not per degree. Um, the next ones uh, uh, that we're going to look for is the uh, the for-profit schools. Um, you know, many the a for-profit school is basically an institution that uh, it operates making a profit from student tuition. Uh, in some cases, or you know, or in a lot of cases, uh, these schools could. Um, uh, because they're trying to make a profit, they're going to cut corners when it comes to like, you know, a curriculum or, or educational resources for the students or hiring qualified faculty. Uh, and again, it's all because they operate um, uh, in a system where they do need to make a profit uh, one way or another. So again, some of the things that you need to be aware of when going for these schools or when choosing, if you decide to go for a for-profit school, is, um, uh, you know, is this school regionally accredited? You know, there are six accredited um, accreditation agencies in the United States. And for Illinois schools, that is the, um, the Higher Learning Commission of the North Central Association of Colleges and Schools, and, or the NCA. 
Um, so definitely do your research, make sure that your school is accredited. Um, also look for certification requirements. You know, does the programs that the school offers lead to a certification or license, or is it basically just uh, a certificate that you get without any um, any certifications uh, or any um, uh, licenses at the end? Because if that's the case, you know, you might end up having some uh, issues later on trying to find employment uh, without those certifications. Um, also look for the job availability, you know, will your degree from that school be accepted uh, by employers? Uh, does the school have a job placement program? Uh, how, you know, what's their uh, employment rate after graduation? All of those things are things that you should be considering. And also, um, you know, just a little fact, for-profit school uh, students usually face higher debt and more unemployment after graduation. Uh, the higher debt part is definitely because these schools do cost more money than a lot of uh, colleges and universities. And, um, and in, in some cases, financial aid does not cover um, their, the, the tuition. So a lot of students are paying out of pocket for these programs and, um, or taking loans and things like that. And then the unemployment, again, if you chose the wrong school or, if, or, or you fell into one of those uh, scams, then you're looking at you got something from them, but then you're not employable afterwards because it's not, it wasn't an accredited school. So again, just a few little things to consider. Um, like I mentioned, you know, there are religiously affiliated schools out there. Um, these are uh, private schools, so they do end up costing a little more than um, than uh, public universities. Uh, but, you know, if you are looking to go to a school um, or to be connected to a specific religious affiliation, you can always search uh, or, or limit your search to schools based on, on, on those religious affiliations. Um, it's, it's definitely not for everybody, but if you are looking for something like that, they, uh, they are out there. And, um, and again, it's just like any other university. It, they, all, they, they will be uh, accredited just like any other college or university. So the next factor that we're going to look into is going to be the size of the school. You know, um, that is, again, that is more of a student choice or a student um, uh, comfort. You know, do you prefer a larger school or a smaller school? What are you more comfortable with? Uh, some of the pros, you know, that I would mention about, let's say, going to a larger school, uh, larger schools usually do offer more majors. Uh, this is especially more um, also a pro for students who potentially are undecided because they have more options or more choices uh, as far as making that decision. They often do have more resources to um, more um, distinguished faculty. They offer more activities for students and, and, and uh, sports and clubs and, and a lot more going on in, in those bigger college campuses. Um, some of the, the cons perhaps for, uh, for a big size school is that because they are so big, the college, the class sizes are also going to be larger. So you get less of that personalized attention from a professor. Uh, you might be sitting in a class in, in a lecture hall where you, there might be over a hundred students in the, in the class. So it, it really depends, even though I did put it actually there as a con, who knows, you might be more comfortable in that bigger setting, um, so, so again, it comes down to those choices or those uh, preferences from the student, whether you want to be more intimate settings or, or larger settings. Um, you know, so, so, so that's something to consider. Um, and then obviously, you know, because it is a bigger campus, then you have more of a bigger distance in between classes. So you also have to take those, in, those things into consideration, trying to get from one class to the next um, when you are in a larger campus. Um, you know, the small schools, you know, obviously they often have smaller class sizes and more of that personalized attention from the professor. Um, they do often tend to have fewer, uh, fewer majors um, for uh, available to the students but often it's more for students who, who already know what, what they want to do and it's, it's um, um, 
you know, it's more of that choice where, where they're not undecided necessarily. Um, so if you, however, are undecided and you go to one of those uh, small schools, at the, uh, at the end of the day, if you end up picking a major that the school doesn't offer, you're looking at, at having to then transfer to another school. So obviously not a great choice perhaps for undecided students because of that, if you're not looking to have to go through a transfer process. So Carlos, related to this, we got a question that popped up here. Um, sure. When trying to get a degree, is a bigger or smaller school the better choice? It, you know, it actually, it doesn't matter. I mean, if you're, if the school offers the degree, then it's going to come down to, um, again, whether you rather have the, the smaller uh, settings in class or, you know, we're also going to talk about the location now. In, so is it, it's a small school, uh, perhaps more of like a rural school versus a, a city school or how close it is to your house. So the, 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 the size of the school doesn't necessarily matter in, in, or make a degree better. Uh, it's more, it's more going to be of a, of a personal preference on, um, on those things that I mentioned, like the class size or um, the activities on campus or the resources available on campus. But the degree itself, whether it's for a big school or a small school, is still going to be the same. The strength of the program, too. Right, um, exactly. There, there are schools that are more or less known for certain programs. They just have a higher number of students that complete those programs or they have dedicated more resources to those programs. Um, you know, just for example, Wabansi, the ones that we're known for the most are the nursing program and the auto program. Um, at some of the four years, um, thinking like U of I, U of I, Champaign-Urbana engineering is one of the top ones that comes to mind when students are thinking about going there. For Northern, it's their business program. So um, definitely worth asking, you know, what is the strength of your program? How long have you had the program at your school? That sort of thing. Yeah, that's a good point. Yes. All right, so location, like I said, you know, that's one that we're gonna to touch a little on. Um, it's, and again, you know, I'm gonna say, uh, these are all factors that perhaps everybody or, or a lot of students are going to consider. Um, there's no particular order for these as far as which one is more important than another. That's also a personal uh, uh, preference for, for students. You know, um, the location of the school might be more of a, uh, or, or place higher in your list of criteria than perhaps the size of the school. You know, so, so again, all, all these little things is just so that you can, look at uh, different options that are going to be out there available for you and then you can consider a lot of uh, different things uh, before you you make your decision so that you make sure that you are picking the right college for you. Um, so again location you know it's it's often downplayed in, you know in, in in relative to like the importance of the academics and obviously academics is is going to be a, a huge deal but like I said um, it's it is an, another important factor specifically because um, at the end of the day it, it all also relates to um, how much it's going to cost you you know if you're choosing a school that is far away from home you have to take into consideration um, the cost of traveling it, or the cost of um, your room and board and if you choose something closer to home some of those costs are going to be perhaps less because you could potentially be living at home or the traveling might be less things like that um, so if we look at let's say like rural versus um, uh, urban you know uh, not everybody is always comfortable in an urban setting not everybody wants to can can live in a city and be around a lot of people and have to deal with I don't know like public transportation and perhaps not being able to have a car because of parking you know there's a lot of these things that you take into consideration um, some students are perhaps more more comfortable in a um, in a more rural setting, uh, small town. You know the school still can be you know pretty big. I mean, you look at like um, uh, University of Illinois. It's a huge school, but it is in a in a smaller town. It is in a in, in you, what you would consider a more rural area in comparison to like. I don't know, you look at the Paul University in Chicago or something like that. So again, you know, all these things combine 
uh, could definitely help you make those decisions. You know, some people will prefer perhaps living in the city or going to a school in the city because of the opportunities that the city can offer. Uh, you have cities that are perhaps more diverse, so you can expose yourself to a lot of more uh, of a lot of different cultures. Uh, the city also. Um, uh, has a lot of more social opportunities where you can actually uh, go out and experience a lot more cultural things too, like go to the museums and theaters and things like that, that perhaps a, a, a rural school might not have as much of. Um, but again, you know, the, with, the, with the rural area schools, you build that uh, sense of community more with the people in your school. Uh, you still get a sense of community or, 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 or a very diverse community within the student body rather than from the city or, or, the, or the, the population outside of your school. So uh, again, you know, all, you can still get that experience uh, in a smaller setting, perhaps in a smaller school. Um, one of the good things also about those rural schools are that um, you, you know, everybody lives on campus, the professors live in town, so everybody's close to the school. And then you get a sense of community from those who live in town because those are your, those are gonna be your support. Those are gonna be your, you know, the, the people who are gonna be coming to your sports events or any, uh, uh, any special events on campus, you get a lot of support from the community. So you get to know those people probably a lot more than you would living in a big city. Um, the distance from home, like I said, you know, it can play, uh, uh, it can impact those decisions too, because, you know, how much are you willing to travel? How much is it going to cost you to travel? Um, are you okay, you know, moving away from home and being away from home for the first time, perhaps? Um, if you live on campus, you know, are students allowed to even have cars on campus? That's a question that, you know, not all colleges allow that. Um, are you, if you're going to be moving away from home, uh, how close are you to like an airport or, or, or train station or public transportation so that you can get home? Uh, and then again, how much is it going to cost you to, to go through all that? It is a, a very sp uh, uh, stressful time, you know, going to college or moving away from home for the first time. So, you know, are you willing to be far away from family and friends who potentially are your social support network? Um, so um, that big factor as well. Uh, and then in-state versus out-of-state, in, it comes down also to the, the cost. You know, if you're going to a, uh, an out-of-state public school, it's definitely going to cost you a lot more than you go to an in-state public school. Uh, if you were going to a private school, whether it's in-state or out-of-state, it's still going to cost you the same. Um, and I'll show you a little chart in a sec where you're going to see the, the prices of, of uh, the different institutions. Um, but one of the things also to take into consideration, some careers will require licensing. And um, if you're going out of state, sometimes that license that you get uh, when you graduate, is only good for the state where you're graduating at. And if you're coming back home or even moving for another state, you do have to consider that there might be other requirements that you have to um, fulfill in order to get licensed at I, I, I don't know the state. So those are things also uh, to consider. Um, and, you know, there are some, however, careers where it might be good to be out of state. Um, like, for example, in Illinois, if you wanted to go into something more like marine biology, you want to work with, uh, you know, dolphins or, or want to work with uh, ocean animals, you know, there's no ocean around here. So you're definitely going to have to uh, probably go somewhere uh, near the water or near the ocean to be able to um, to get the best education you can in that field. Um, so, so in some cases, again, your career might, or, or your uh, major might be uh, dictating whether or not you want to stay here or whether or not which, which kind of school you're going to be choosing. Uh, some of the other things you want to consider are definitely the facilities that the campus offers uh, or the campus has. Uh, you know, are there dorms if you're going to be moving away from home? Um, and, you know, how close are those dorms to your classrooms or, your, or, or the library or the different resources are you going to be using uh, on a daily basis? Um, 
is there a library? Where is it? Where is it at? Where are the hours for the library? Um, does it have all the, the the amenities that you need in order to be able to successfully uh, 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 finish your papers or whatever it is your homework? If you need to use those facilities, uh, do you have access to computer labs? You know, these are some of the things that you definitely sometimes don't think of because you might think like, oh, I'm going to college. It should have all these things. Well, don't don't automatically assume that all colleges have everything you need. You definitely want to look for those resources. Um, some other things would be like school activities uh, or campus activities. Uh, what is there to do on campus or around campus? Uh, where can I go to hang out if I need to take a break or, or need to de-stress? Uh, what kind of clubs and organizations the school offers and do they match the interests that you have? Uh, fraternities, sororities, uh, sports teams, all of these things, you know, just, this is a time to, you know, for lack of a better word, be picky, you know, start with a list of everything you want. And eventually you're going to be narrowing things down to what is more important, most important to you. Um, safety is another, uh, another thing you should be looking at, you know, um, how safe is the school? How safe is it to walk around campus, especially at night? Uh, does the school offer uh, uh, like a 24 hour security um, can, does it have like call boxes around campus? Um, how secure is your dorm? Do you need an access card to get into it? Uh, I know for parents, that's probably one of the, the, the most important things too, is like, you know, how secure is the campus? Um, you also want to look at some of the services uh, uh, that, the, that the school offers, like counseling or uh, well-being services, a fitness center perhaps. For a lot of students, that you know, going to the fitness center, it, it, it relaxes them, it de-stress uh, uh, after a, a whole day of, of studying or going to class. Um, is there technical support for students on campus? Um, how about students with disabilities? You know, what kind of services are provided for students with disability, uh, with disabilities? How uh, um, accessible is the campus and, uh, or the dorms, you know, are there accommodations at the dorms for students with disabilities? So again, a lot of things to consider. Um, Last, we're going to talk about cost, and 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 this one, it's you know, it's a big factor. It's probably the biggest factor when choosing a college for a lot of students, uh, because college can be quite expensive, you know, depending on on where you're going and what kind of school you choose and things like that. Um, you know, when you calculate the total cost of going to college, uh, these things all you know, are needed, you know, you're going to be paying your tuition. Again, it's going to vary from school to school or the type of school. You're going to be paying for textbooks. Uh, it, approximately, you're looking at probably around $200 per class per semester. So all those costs are going to add up. Room and board, you know, that's your 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 dorms and, and, the, and the meal plan and things like that. Um, travel expenses, again, if you're going to be a commuter and even if you live at home, perhaps you're going to take into consideration the gas, uh, car maintenance. If you're going to be out of state or, or at a school that is further away from, from home and you're not a commuter, you're actually living on campus, still you need to consider the traveling expenses of having to pay for a plane ticket or a bus or, you know, even if you do have a car on campus, those uh, expenses do add up. Car insurance, things like that. Cost of living, you know, depending on where you live, whether it's in the city or or, or rural, you know, they um, there are other costs that are added to um, to your daily life, you know, and living in the city potentially can be more expensive than living uh, um, out in a, in a rural area, but still there, there are extra expenses. Uh, you have your recreation expenses, you know, once in a while you want to go to a movie or go to a club or, you know, go out to eat. So those things should take into consideration. And ultimately, you know, what your major, you, you know, like I said earlier, depending on your career, there's certain uh, education you need to um, to get to. So, um, you know, you might be needing to, you might be going for a career where you're going to get a master's degree. That's going to be you know, six years at least in school. Uh, or if you're going for a PhD, that's 
probably closer to like eight years in school. So, you know, depending on your career, that can also, um, you know, that's more time, more money that you're going to be spending uh, in college. Uh, just to give you an idea on average cost of tuition uh, for the different type of institution. So if you're looking at a public two year in district school, like a community college, on average, you're looking at about $3,700 for tuition. This is only tuition. This does not include room and board or any of the extra cost. Um, for a public four years in state, you're looking at about 10K. Uh, out of state for a public school, you're looking at about almost $27,000. And then if you're looking at a private school, uh, you're looking at closer to $37,000 a year. So again, depending on the school, those are quite big jumps in between each of those. Um, once you add all the extra costs, you know, room and board and, and transportation and all that, you can see how that price does jump quite a bit too. Um, for some of these schools, you know, again, if you don't live on campus, those that room and board cost is not going to be that. Um, potentially, if you live at home, you could be contributing to rent with your parents or something like that or mortgage with your parents but it's definitely not, not going to be that there's there's different things that you can do that can reduce the cost um but ultimately this is just to give you an idea of how much money you'd be spending uh per year depending on what school you choose um you know many students just can't afford that so you definitely look at looking at students having to take student loans uh, having to apply for financial aid for sure. Uh, you know, student loans, it, it's, it's definitely a big part of the college education uh, process in the United States. Um, as you can see here, you know, the, there's a lot of students, most students do have to end up taking uh, student loans. Um, definitely try to avoid them when possible. And if there's any way that you can save money, absolutely try to avoid the student loans. I always tell that to my students. Um, and again, it's not always possible, but or it's not always a, a, an option, but try as much as you can. Um, you can see that, you know, in the United States, those numbers, they look quite large, you know, as far as the student loan debt. Uh, and on average, you can see uh, for a bachelor's degree, how many, um, what students usually take out after finishing a degree. Um, the numbers are big, definitely, um, you know, something to, to consider. Um, you know, some of the things to look at when you are, um, you know, if you want to, uh, kind of reduce the, the cost of going to school. Definitely apply for financial aid. That I couldn't stress enough. You know, even if you think that you are making too much money or your parents, you know, make too much money, you never know, you know, until you apply, uh, um, until you submit that application, if you qualify for financial aid or what kind of financial aid you could receive. Um, the other thing to, think, to take into consideration is that for some scholarships, when you're applying for scholarships, they are, they want you to have a FAFSA application on file in order to be considered for the scholarship. So again, whether or not you want to use financial aid, you might be asked to complete one in order to qualify for a scholarship. Um, plus, at the end of the day, whether you think like you want a student loan or not, the student loans come from are given, but in, in most cases, these are federal student loans. Um, you're going to need a FAFSA application in order to take a student loan uh, from the government. So again, that FAFSA application uh, is there whether you want to later use what they're offering you or not. That's totally up to you. Just because you apply does not mean that you have to accept it. So it's, it's just kind of like as an option, definitely fill out a FAFSA application. Um, you know, start a community college. The, you know, our classes are just as challenging and as, um, as important as a four-year school. You know, we, um, as we saw earlier, the cost also is definitely a huge factor. You can get an associate's degree for, um, you know, 
probably a third of what those two years will cost you at a four-year school. So it's definitely going to save you a ton of money. And again, all those classes will transfer later to, to a four-year school where you can continue to get your bachelor's. Your associate's degree at a community college is half of your bachelor's. So once you transfer that that uh, associate's degree from Wabansi, you know, you're looking at, you're already halfway there. So you just need to do the last two years at the, at the uh, college or university of your choice. Um, and again, you're saving room and board. So that's even more money you're saving uh, at the end of the day. Uh, consider in-state schools, you know, again, it comes down to the cost. So those in-state schools are going to cost you a lot less than if you go to an out-of-state school or if you go into a private school. Um, Again, that, that cost is definitely significantly less. Um, skip the dorm. You know, if you're gonna be living on, um, if you're gonna be living or going to school close to uh, to home, try it, see if you can, you know, stay at home, save the money. If you do have to go away for college though, there are also options of perhaps getting uh, off-campus housing. Maybe get an apartment with some friends or with roommates, and that would bring the cost of, um, of this significantly uh, uh, lower. Um, you also want to earn some credits while you're still in high school. You can take some dual credit uh, courses through your high school. You can take AP classes and take AP exams to, um, to get uh, college credit for those and then accelerate your college career you know, with those credits. So that would also save you money and time. Um, and ultimately, you know, avoid those private loans. Those loans are definitely uh, are going to have much higher interest rates than if you take the federal loans that the, the, the government offers. And in a lot of cases, you are going to qualify for subsidized loans when you take the federal loan instead of the private loans. And subsidized loans are loans where the government pays the interest while you're in school. So in those cases, you are not accumulating that interest uh, for the time that you are in school. So those are just uh, some tips, you know, to um, to avoid those high cost of tuition and, and college. Carlos, we got a question. Sure. Um, are there any situations where starting in a community college would cost more money if you transfer to a different school? I wouldn't think so. I would say that um, there are some areas where perhaps you you change your major, you know, and you took uh, classes that the school that you're transferring to uh, is not what they want to see in a transcript because you're now going for a different major. Uh, so you always want, you know, like I mentioned earlier, you also want to um, have those communication with your transfer schools uh, just so that they can tell you what it is that they want to see. We have done some of the research, especially in state. Like I said, um, we have done some of those research for you. We have transfer guides here um, that, um, that would tell you what some of our top transfer schools want to see in a transcript. So that list can be given to you right up front when you first come to see an advisor when you're registering for classes. Um, We've also created pathways, so it basically outlined what classes you should take each semester depending on your degree. So that also is a, um, is, is a more personalized list of classes specifically for your major. So, so I, I haven't really heard of anybody having to pay more money, you know, because their degree didn't transfer, especially for a community college. Like, you know, we are accredited. We are, we have, we offer our transfer uh, programs. So it's just that it's just depending on what classes you took. If, if maybe you took some of those um, career programs uh, and now you're going, let's say you were interested in welding at some point, and now you want to go for a business degree, you know, those two degrees require different classes. So your general education classes will still be the same, but those major specific courses are going to be different. And those are the classes where perhaps you cannot use towards your degree. But if you're kind of sticking to the same degree from the beginning, um, th there's not, you know, there, that's not going to become an issue. Well, and I think maybe a, a different angle to, to look at this is the, and the only real time besides what Carlos is talking about that I've ever seen it is when it comes to students having to choose between scholarships. So for example, um, you know, two-year colleges offer scholarships certainly, 
Um, our dollar amount can likely never get as high as what potentially a four year could offer because at the end of the day, it doesn't cost nearly as much to attend a community college as it does a four year. Um, but you know, just because you get a scholarship from a four year school that's a big dollar amount out front, um, you know, you need to ask the question, is this a one time scholarship? Do I get the same amount every year? Um, do I only get it for a certain number of years? If you're in a situation where you're getting a scholarship for the entire course of your time there for four years and it's bringing it down to a cost that's comparable to a community college, there have been some students that chose the four year route because of that. Yeah. But, you know, very carefully ask the question when a four year school is offering you a scholarship as far as how long do I have that scholarship? Because what we don't want to see is somebody getting a scholarship that lasts maybe the first two years and then the second two. Your, your costs jump up in a big way because that scholarship isn't renewable or you applied for something and maybe you didn't get the same thing again. Yeah. And then you guys, so this is, this is basically just wrapping everything up. You know, at the end of the day, you're getting a lot of information here. Um, you know, um, you can always let us know. We can share this presentation or this PowerPoint with you. Um, it can be emailed to you later. Um, but, you know, just weigh your pros and cons. Uh, do some research and, 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 and take all these things into consideration. Prioritize your factors. You know, everything that we talked about, like I said, not one thing could be more important to one student and not so much for another. So like school size and location, again, it, it's, it's more of a personal uh, preference for each student. So you got to prioritize those. And, you know, these are it's hard to take all of these things into consideration. So if it becomes too overwhelming, you can always narrow things down. Maybe just look at your top three priorities uh, out of all the things that we talked about in, and, and see which schools are gonna meet those criteria for you. Um, you know, it's always good to talk to family and friends, maybe your counselors at school or your teachers and talk to people who may be attended to those schools that you are considering because they probably can give you more of those uh, um, uh, you know, what their impressions were, what their experiences were like, uh, what their recommendations are, things like that. You know, you want to get uh, um, um, a lot of, of this information is, is best if, it's, if it comes from word of mouth from people who were actual students there. Um, you know, sometimes um, you do want to go and visit the campus. You want to talk uh, to students who are currently, uh, you know, taking classes or, or attending that school. Um, you want to maybe uh, attend the class, just kind of like sit in one of the classes. You want to, some schools will offer this to students who are interested, you know, your senior year or maybe your junior year, you can start um, talking to these schools and, 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 and just um, um, investigating into, into what can you do to, to get that experience. Um, eat in the dining room, in uh, or the dining hall in, in, in cam on campus to see if that is something that you, um, you know, if it's, if it's on top of your list. Um, read the newspaper, for, you know, the newspaper in a lot of cases is put out by students. So this is, again, uh, you're gonna get that experience from the students who are currently there. Um, you can visit the residence halls. You can spend the night. A lot of colleges do that where you can come in um, and, and they're open to, um, to students uh, when they're doing a campus visit. Um, and ultimately, you know, you guys, at the end of the day, this is your decision. So make sure that you are choosing this, whatever is best for you. Use your personal judgment. Um, Try not to let people, you know, influence you. Don't don't necessarily choose it because it's, you know, somebody else is going there. Because like I said, you know, what is good for you perhaps is not best for your best friend or the other way around. So just kind of use your judgment and take all these things serious uh, um, and, and take everything into consideration as much as you can. Um, so this is basically the end of the presentation. You know, my name, like I said, is Carlos Suarez. Uh, I'm going to leave this uh, information uh, there in case you um, you want to write it down. You can always reach out to me if you have any questions. Um, if you have any questions right now, definitely feel free to ask. I, I appreciate that you've been asking throughout the presentation too. Um, so if there's anything I can do, definitely keep asking those questions. Okay.
uh, but thank you so much everybody for coming in tonight and uh, and like I said we'll share this presentation with with you guys in case you want to kind of on your own go over the slides and Carlos we do have several questions here okay um, so one of the questions is would it be free to attend classes or stay the night to see if the college is a good fit for you? Um, these, yeah, if for a lot of these colleges, if you are just attending maybe one day just to kind of uh, um, get a sense of, you know, what these classes are like, um, a lot of colleges do have programs in place for like, um, um, students who are seniors or whatever who are uh, considering attending their college to come in and, and, and experience these things for free. Um, staying on campus, you, you know, for the night, um, I, I couldn't answer that necessarily. Some, I don't know if they will charge, but I know some colleges will definitely do it for free as well. Um, that's more of a case by case from, from each college, but it wouldn't hurt to, to reach out to them. Um, I think, you, you know, I can say for sure yes or no on that one. I think particularly now with COVID, um, a lot of schools are, are evaluating their visit programs yeah. and doing things a little bit differently. So how we might have answered this a year ago um, is very different from how we would answer <laughs> it now. So I would definitely look at, you know, how have their options probably changed in light of COVID. Yeah, um, I feel like a lot of colleges right now are probably doing more of the virtual tours rather than face to face. So another question, what's a good way to find a college's strengths? Um, you know, de definitely you can, their, their website would definitely have that. If you do some research on the, uh, online, a lot of that kind of like that list that I, that I showed earlier from like us news, um, you know, there's going to be a ton of list out there, like, you know, top 10 liberal arts schools or top 10 business schools or, you know, things like that, that, and it doesn't have to be the top 10. In a lot of cases, you'll find a list that is definitely bigger than that. Um, but you can definitely go through their website. You can, you can see what, um, if you see any accreditations, um, a lot of schools, like for example, at Wabansi, uh, we have a really great uh, auto body program. And right on the website, you'll see that there are, um, anytime that there's any uh, awards that are won uh, by the program or any uh, accreditations or any partnerships with, with um, with outside companies or that, that we are, you know, we post that in there. Uh, same thing with our um, uh, automotive, automotive program. So, so a lot of websites, a lot of colleges will want to, uh, would enhance or not enhance, but rather uh, will post that, those things on their, on their college or their, their program pages so that you know exactly, you know, how popular it is or how good it is or, 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 you know, all the, the different awards and, and things like that, that, that people are um, receiving within the programs. Or just ask the question, uh, you know, when you're talking to an advisor at a college fair, what, what is your college known for? What programs are your yeah. college known for? Um, and pretty much any admissions advisor will be able to list off the top of their heads the top three or four programs that are the most popular or the most um, strong within their institution. Yeah. And often, you, you know, just by talking to the alumni or even talking to current students, if you know any, you know, I, I understand that in a lot of cases, that's not an easy thing to do, especially if you don't know anybody who's going there or who went there. Um, but um, definitely, that's, that's the best thing is a school can have a great program, you know, or claim to have a great program, uh, but your experience might be different from the experience that somebody else had. So it's also something that you can look into to see if, if you know, what kind of experience somebody else was having in that program. Um, just again, just to see if it's a good fit for you. Um, next question. Any suggestions for public universities in the state that have a good nursing program that you should look at? Um, well, I know in the area, um, most of our students, they, well, when it comes to public, really, it would be like NIU has a program. Um, 
I, you know, I, I don't do a lot. I don't deal a lot with like transfer necessarily, but um, AU is the other one that is very popular with our students, but they're, you know, it's not really a public university. It's, it's a private one. Um, but I would um, say, I think um, U of I at Chicago has a nursing yeah. program um, and Illinois State. Illinois State normally is um, somewhere that we would say for like education majors, but I believe, you know, if you're really trying to confine it to just a public four years, they do have a nursing program that you could look into. Um, Wabansi has plus one programs though with, with um, NIU. So if you're considering coming to us first, um, we do have some specific arrangements with schools in the area that make it easier for you to transfer as a nursing student. Yeah. Um, next question we've got is, are there any specific things to look for if transferring to a four year university? Um, you know, you definitely, again, the, the, the earlier you know what schools you're considering, the, the better. Uh, and definitely up, up in those communications with them and let us know if you know that they they're asking you for something uh, perhaps different than what we're telling you to take or that we're recommending to take let us know because it's it's ultimately it's their decisions to to let you into the, their school or, or, or their program so we'll make sure that you're following their their requirements um, Honestly, it's, it's going to come down to making sure that you do follow their, uh, their admissions criteria. Um, you know, you can transfer to a four year school at any time, you know, so don't necessarily think that you, you have to actually finish your associates, although it does make things easier when you transfer, depending again on your program. Um, some schools might be asking you to come in before the associates because they're very picky in what classes they want you to take before you enter their school and what classes you have to take at their school. So, so those are things that, you know, some of the conversations that we're even having with you in advance, because depending on your major, depending on, on what program you're going into, um, you might not be fin finishing an associate's degree with us. You might be transferring earlier than that. Um, so it's, you know, I would say that's one of my biggest thing to, to students is, you know, keep that communication open with your transfer school and let us know if there's anything that, um, that they're telling you that, that you need to follow so that we make sure that you do meet those criteria. So, and then it looks like the last question we had here was, um, after completing an associate's in biology at Wabansi, would I still have to transfer to a four-year university to go to a physician assistant school, or could I go straight there? Um, I believe physician assistant master's degree is like the minimum requirement to be employable in that field. Um, yeah. So... I think it would depend on where you were going. Um, you know, if you're going to a physician assistant school specifically, like where does the curriculum pick up? Um, or is the expectation that you are at a certain level with your degree or have a certain number of credits before you go into their program? Because a lot of places, especially with medical fields, um, their expectation for you to even be eligible to get into their program is that you have a very specific set of courses done. Um, so the bigger thing is to make sure that you're having done what they're requiring as a minimum for admission. And everybody's is going to look kind of different. Yeah. And then one more question. What are the things a student should look for if they're thinking of studying abroad, assuming that they can do that once they've applied somewhere? Um, I mean, you can definitely look into the school to make sure that they offer the programs, you know. Um, here with Bansi, we do going? have, I'm sorry? And where are they going? Like, where can you study abroad? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, again, right now, that's that's all up in the air, you know, with COVID and everything. Um, it, you, you know, 
to study abroad in a lot of cases, you know, there's some criteria you do need to meet. I know with us, you cannot do it like your first semester. You have to make sure that you finish uh, um, a certain amount of credits first before you can you can actually uh, consider uh, uh, going abroad. Um, you know, so so it's just a matter of of looking into in you know into those programs. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you can do study abroad both at the community college at the four year uh, uh, schools. Um, and that's more of a conversation that you can start having with your counselor. Again, probably not until second second year, really. Uh, that's when you'll be able to start considering study abroad. And I would ask whatever classes you're going to be doing as you're studying abroad, where does that fit into your degree program? Yeah, um, yeah. You know, what classes are part of the study abroad program? How long are you there? Like, is it a fall spring program or are you going over the summer? Where you don't have as much time there so the classes are going to go much quicker um you know are you able to do study abroad and it keeps you on the four-year track or are most students becoming like you know fifth year seniors if they're doing study abroad that sort of thing yeah and then of course you know the cost involved with that you know that's that's also some discussions that you're going to have to have because um perhaps the extra tuition or not the extra tuition, but the extra travel expenses and, and things like that that come with uh, studying abroad. Okay, so that's the only other questions that we had in there. Okay. That's cool. Those are really great questions. I, I'm glad that, that you all were asking those questions. I feel like those are the, that's, most of those questions is the first time that I get those questions in this presentation. All right, you guys. So like I said, you know, thank you so much. If you have any other questions, again, feel free to reach out to us at, um, you can either reach out to me directly or the admissions department uh, and um, the here at Wabansi. Uh, we do have other advisors available uh, at this department. so a lot of us can help you definitely uh, with your inquiries and uh, we'll be more than happy to help you for sure uh, with with your questions. So feel free to reach out to us and then like I said we'll be sending you a copy of this presentation uh, via email so you'll be able to you'll have my contact information on that on that PowerPoint as well in case you um, you need it for more questions later. All right, so thank you so much, everybody, and everybody have a good night.